Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1524 of our trek, and it is time for Meditation Monday. Taking time to relax, refocus, and reprioritize our lives is crucial in order to create a living legacy. For you, it may be just a time alone for quiet reflection, or you may utilize some sort of structured meditation practices. In my life, meditation includes reading and reflecting on God's Word and in prayer. It is a time to renew my mind, refocus on what is most important, and making sure that I am nurturing my soul, mind, and body. As you come along with me on our Trek Each Meditation Monday, it is my hope and prayer that you too will experience a time of reflection and renewing of your mind. We are continuing the series this week on Meditation Monday as we focus on mastering Bible study through a series of brief insights from Hebrew scholar Dr. Michael S. Heiser. Our current insights are focusing on the accuracy of interpreting the Bible. Today, let's meditate on... Bible study, by design, and you are not omniscient. Insight number 39. By design, some things of the Bible are clearer than others. The Bible is an uneven book. If you think about the range of subjects it covers, some of the things get a lot more attention than others. For example, the Bible has a lot more to say about Moses and the Exodus from Egypt than what Moses did in Midian for 40 years after fleeing Pharaoh. Most of what the New Testament tells us about Jesus covers his final three and a half years of his life. We know nothing about Jesus from the time he was 12 to the beginning of his ministry when he was around 30. The Bible presentation of doctrine is the same way. We are told a great deal about the nature of salvation, the meaning of what Jesus did on the cross, the relationship of faith and works, and the work of the Holy Spirit. We are told next to nothing about where angels and demons come from or the origin of the soul. This imbalance is deliberate. The biblical writers had agendas concerning what they wrote. Their books come out of specific circumstances and target specific events or questions. It was God who prompted them to write when they did and to do so from their socio-cultural context. God chose specific men and specific time and places to write for spiritual posterity. God's choices are intelligent and deliberate. The very nature of the enterprise of inspiration means that the product, the Bible, will be selective. Let's think about what this means and doesn't mean. I'm not suggesting that the items to which the Bible devotes little space is unimportant. Everything the Bible comments on is essential. Every passage in Scripture has some commutative purpose. What I am saying is that the frequency and repetition indicate emphasis. If we are mindful of inspiration as a providential process it was... Frequency telegraphs that certain truths are more central to the overall biblical message. The situation is sort of like a website. Most of your attention is drawn to the big pictures or large text on the screen. That's what holds your interest by design. Tiny links are scattered here and there in the margins and across the top. They don't communicate much by themselves, but following them can illumine the whole point of the website. Both are indispensable. Let's move on to insight number 40. Don't be shaken by your lack of omniscience. Dr. Heiser shares this insight. I get asked if I've ever changed my viewpoint on something in the Bible from time to time. People often presume that scholars have everything nailed down. I'll tell you, we don't. I've always told my students the truth about this, and so I'll tell you, of course, I've changed my mind. That's what happens when people think, keep absorbing information, and are in the habit of asking God for courage to humbly and theologically be honest. I know that most Bible teachers and people feel some anxiety about saying, I'm not sure right now, or I've changed my mind, when it comes to interpreting the Bible. Parents might fear doing so because they don't want their kids turning to other sources, such as their peers or the information mailstorm that we call the Internet. Scholars might feel uneasy about the admission since they are supposed to be authorities. 
Worrying about this accomplishes nothing in either case. Your kids will talk to their peers and search YouTube no matter how brilliant your answers are. And I'm sorry, Professor, but your seminarians and graduate students know you don't know everything, so deal with it. Pastors do have a unique hurdle in this regard. Most of the people in the pew have the habit of presuming that the pastor is an expert on the Bible and doctrine. They typically don't have access to the biblical scholars and can rarely even name one. In the eyes of their people, the pastors are their default scholars. Because of this burden, I've known many pastors who are afraid to sound uncertain in front of their people. Not knowing what the passage says for sure, or how to flawlessly unravel a theological knot, might reveal a chink in their armor, or so they presume. This is unfortunate and unfair to those in ministry. Even if you're not a pastor or seminarian, the odds are high that if you're a serious student of Scripture, you will also teach others or will be asked to do so at some point. When your students ask you questions, try to fix in your mind and heart that they are not probing for your weaknesses. They're sincere. They want to know. And you're their best shot at getting the answer right now. Do your best, tell them when you're not sure, and then get busy finding the answer. So let's finish up with our verse for today, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. And that's a wrap for today's meditation. Next week we will continue our trek on Meditation Monday as we take time to reflect on what is most important in creating our living legacy. On tomorrow's trek we will explore another wisdom quote. This three-minute wisdom supplement will assist you on becoming healthy, wealthy, and wise each day. Thank you for joining me for this trek that we call life. And encourage your friends and family to join us and to come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,523 daily treks or read the daily journals, they are available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, and most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.